All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are getting ready to hop into that next series of Nurcio versus Semper. Let me get that up on the... Yeah, this? this should be a good one. I think so, and I think that I'm... I'm I'm very torn because Rifkin, you know me. You know I'm a North American guy. You know I love my North American babies. But do you wait? Since when? Do I? Is this do... a new development? You know, it's a, it's a fairly recent thing that I've started obsessing over the North American scene. I really used to hate it actually quite a bit. But I will say, Semper, I don't actually. I I'm I'm gonna put it out there. I'm really worried. I don't think that he's actually going to be able to put up that much of a fight. I'm really worried that's going to be the case because I've got to say lately, and I know you were kind of talking about this. You know, you was, had this breakout performance and everything in the beginning of Legacy of the Void. And he wasn't doing as well, but I would say lately more so than ever. Semper just hasn't been playing his play style. And every single time I watch him, it's like this big question on my mind. Is Semper going to do the, Sem the Semper style that I know and I know you know and love, which is... He is crazy about drop harassment and positional play and pulling his opponent apart. And lately, I've just been seeing Semper play, and he always seems to be very, very pinned back. He always seems to be playing this very defensive style, putting on only, like, one drop. He'll do, like, one drop in, like, a 10, 15-minute game. And that's what concerns me. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I just, I love... Any game I get to cast in there too, because he's the only player that will spam poops with me in the lobby. Uh, we I made a poop pyramid, I guess. Oh <laughs> my god! Wow. Uh, looks like Nerd is anxious to go. He is spamming the keyboard. A lot of good luck and have funs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so New Gettysburg should present a lot of cool opportunities. But yeah, at the end of the day, Nurcio is like Nurcio for. Protoss for Zerg, uh, Showtime for Protoss, and Youth Thermal for Terran are like my three top rated foreigners for each race. So this is tough for Semper for a lot of different reasons, but this is like the big, the big boss he comes up against right away. Absolutely. We'll see if he can handle it as we get ready to hop into game number one of this best of five series. All right, spawning down here in the bottom left hand corner of the map, we've got the blue Terran player. From North America, representing Root Gaming, it was going to be Semper. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot they made this change. Only a referee can unpause the game. Players cannot unpause the game anymore. <laughs> I don't know whether this was intentional or Well, I think it was intentional that. because it says only a referee can unpause the game. Like yeah. You would not get that text there unless that was like an intentional change. So you say that, right? But also then the recover replay thing. I'm just saying, like. Yeah. Actually, I would love if adding that text is somehow what fucked up. Because <laughs> it would be the admin, the referee who has to unpause the replay. Look, I'm not going to say that I understand those back end core development of StarCraft, but Graham, I'm a software developer. Just trust me on this. Like, that's probably not what messed it up. In the bottom right. Recently sponsored by Red Bull, actually. So, repping that color perfectly, mm. it's gonna be the red Zerg player, Nurcio. And rumor has it, Red Bull, it's what gives his Zerglings wings. Hey, makes sense. Oh man, so this is gonna be. Let's know before we talk about anything, let's talk brass tacks, all right? What's gonna happen in this game? Nurture is going to do one of two things. Either go for Ultralisks or do the Ravager heavy, Queen heavy, Fungal growth combination styles. <laughs> Both of which are, I want to point out, like a lot of people saw Snoot doing it and were like, oh my God, Snoot, you so good. But it was Nurcio who was the first foreigner we saw whip it out in a tournament and he did it to beat Beyond of all people. Mm -hmm. Okay, that should give you some context here. And not just how OG Nurcio is with the builds and innovation and like mastering them, but he does play it really well because he's been doing it longer than most. So Semper either has to deal with what seems to be the impossible equation of Ultralisks or the frustrating and impenetrable mid-game of Ravagers and Fungal Growths. Neither of which I think conventional methods are going to work well against. I would definitely agree with that. I would say one of the sort of weaknesses that the quick teching up to Ultralisks and everything can uh, struggle with, especially when you go for that Roach Ravager style, 
is you can have some trouble dealing against drops. And again, I sort of mentioned like Semper doesn't seem like he's been playing his normal style where he goes crazy on drop aggression. But if he has finally kind of gotten back to that style that I so but, very much love, like I think no, no, no. Well. Let's back this up though, because the problem is like even if that was his his niche, right? Like it was that was his thing that wins him games. Nurtio doesn't take drop damage. That's just Nurtio mm. for you. So like Semper's best move is like Nurtio's easiest defense. That's not how you want to play this game. And that's the point I was trying to emphasize earlier. Like no matter how Semper would normally play, it's not going to fly versus Nurtio if Nurtio is playing properly. How do you feel like Semper should be playing that? Because I think the other big thing about Nurtio that I always think about is he always takes a good engagement. You you cannot catch this guy well, off guard in a bad engagement. So if he can't win with a harassment, he can't. I'm going to reference the mm. best of nine that we had with him and Euthermal for the map contest finals. And while mm -hmm. those weren't conventional maps, Euthermal figured out something pretty quickly, not quickly, I should say, but definitively where it wasn't drops that were doing anything. And he was getting on tilt from not being able to damage him through drops. And it late game obviously wasn't going to work with Ultras. So he just bulked up a mid game force and pushed with it. Now, I don't mm. know if this means you want to intentionally go two bases and all in, or if you're like looking to do a sort of macro variation around three. But it does feel like the only things that seem to work against Nurcio are Terran players not giving away units through drops, not giving units away through harass, but just stocking up to like this really massive supply that hits before ultras are ready to go. Usually the timing is just as the ultra cavern begins. And if you've got a big mm -hmm. enough army, I think you can crack an egg like Nurcio. You know, I would actually totally agree with that because especially I know Scarlet has been someone who has been saying like she really believes that you know, the style that Nurtio has been seeing a lot of success with and everything, it's not that it's bad, but it is a very greedy style, especially the way that Nurtio goes about it. He goes for the Roaches and Ravagers, but he's upgrading his Ultralist. He's upgrading the future Ultralist tech transition that he's going for. And because of that 2-2 two -two timings, he is extremely vulnerable to. So we'll see if Semper decides to go for something like that. He's already gone for the faster stim with the two racks opening. So there's a good chance he's going to be trying to put on some kind of earlier pressure after he gets up combat shields. But he hasn't started to have any engineering bays. He, uh, I guess, finally is about to start up those engineering bays. So there they are. Probably going to be getting up this the plus is, one, plus one. This is interesting. Ryong and a couple other the Koreans have been doing this where on New Gettysburg, they're just saying, screw it, the wall's too frustrating. I think we've seen a couple of foreign Terrans too. And they put the two engineering bays in part of the wall because it walls it off faster with buildings that you're going to build anyways. Mm -hmm. The problem with this, though, is these are easily knocked down by Ravagers later on. And yeah. I feel like we may see that be an issue here. I don't know. I do want to point out, though, that Nurcio, for a moment, looked like he was going to build a bailing nest, but actually stops and swapped over to another evolution chamber. So this is not a bad thing, just interesting because there was that thought, but then something changed. And now he's mm. going to stick around with just Roaches, I think, as we would expect out of Nurcio. Yeah, looks like Semper's gonna try and put on a little bit of harassment with the double medevac drop. Uh, but as you were saying, I think this is something that's really important. It's about trying to get free damage done and forcing out units, making sure that Nurtio is not just cutting too many corners, more so than it is about trading out these units to try and get lots of damage done. He does not want to lose the Marines, more so he does not want to lose the medevacs at all. That's the most important thing about this push. Yeah. Uh, the issue too is like you have to go too deep now. You can't just do one medevac drop like you used to in the past. A lot of that has to do with the queen range and them easily picking off said medevacs. Mm -hmm. Roaches are going to be meeting out against the marines and Sephard's going to have to pull back. Loses one marine, but he's going to be able to get out of there. But this is where I want to talk about the importance of what I was trying to discuss earlier. Like doing a drop like this, finding it not successful, he pulls back and keeps everything alive. Nurcio doesn't get any free kills. He doesn't get eight marines while Semper kills two drones like this is something where as long as he keeps his units alive maybe it won't be so bad he is looking to go for the multi-pronged attack though attacking the north coming right back walking on that creep stims in to start cleaning up tumors mm -hmm. distracting while the drop goes into the main main base doesn't have any defense except for the recently hatched roaches so now responding coming back over here nurture's got defense on two different locations and semper is not going to get a lot done yet it's about four drones so far Ooh. not bad five but he loses some marines and medevac gets kind of low yeah, but at the same time, he does clean up every single active creep, creep tumor, almost every single active creep, active creep tumor at the front line. <laughs> is that lines. a tongue twister? I know, apparently. I never realized active creep tumor was a tongue twister, but here we go. Semper also going to be able to focus right down the fourth expansion. The roaches are fairly far away, and guess what? Galilio Reconstitution only just now is going to be finishing up, so doesn't get there in time to defend. Semper's doing a really nice job of doing, like we were saying before, free damage, but not at the risk of losing units. 
Hive Tech is already starting up, and this is what we're talking about. That extreme greed from Nurcio. He's gonna get out a couple of Infestors, just two Infestors, but he's already been going for those melee upgrades. I like the fact that Semper started up the plus two weapons upgrade. I'd love to see him start up plus two armor as well if he can, but again, like it's really just about hitting that good old timing. Roach counterattack though over here. Nurcio may be able to do some good damage with the third. Ooh, there's nothing over here to defend. The Roach or the Sea Shanks in the natural should Absolutely be able to push them back. Nothing. <laughs> nothing at the natural or the third, okay? The natural okay, expansion doesn't fair count. Fair point. <laughs> That's technically true. Drop in the north, not getting a lot done. The Marines get cleaned up pretty quickly. Seven SCVs go down. And this is Nurture just kind of gliding his way to Hive Tech. I want to point out, he wasn't forced to make a bunch of Ravagers. He didn't have to invest in crazy fungal growths. He was able to defend fairly easily, attack even a little bit where perhaps he shouldn't have been able to. With all this breathing room, just moves towards that Ultra Cavern. But this is the timing for Semper. If he's going to push, he's got to do it now. Because if that Ultra Cavern completes, if Chitinous Plating gets finished, he's, he's going to have a hell of a time. Uh, it's gonna be really really it's a really narrow window right now oh, just because I think for drops and not an attack I think it's a mistake uh, I mean I can kind of understand like his perspective where he thinks oh well 2-2 two, two is still finishing up If I move out too early I'll be forcing an engagement before my 2-2 two, two finishes up and that's not a position you want to be in But at the same time I agree he has to hit no. before Ultralist and now oh, no. His his timing window is gonna be reduced down to like a 15 to 20 second window where he has 2-2 two, two, But Chitinous Plating is not finished up uh, this right here is the problem with drops. Uh, now, I want to point out our infestors. So fungal growths combined with Ravager Cross of Bowels will mean those medevacs go down, and that's going to be really tough to deal with. For mm. Ultra to start up, kind of plenty on the way in 2-2. I mean, there's just, there's just no way he's going to be able to deal with this comfortably. All right. Well, he's doing a nice drop in the main base. The infestor is over there. It can fungal growth this army, and that's going to oh, lock him down. Lord. A lot of them going to take taken out. So medevac still managed to survive and pick up a good chunk of the units, though. So... It's not the worst trade in the world. Semper, though, on the north side, not really accomplishing a whole lot. And still has all of the rest of his army back at home. Plus two melee or missile attack has finished up. Or I should say, plus two infantry weapons. And uh, there's no attack coming. Semper's just taking a fourth. Kindness plating finishing up in about 20 or so seconds. Nidus Worm coming out. Oh boy, I think Semper's in for a, a huge, huge headache coming his way pretty soon. And I'm not sure if he's gonna be prepared for it. He's been making a lot of Marauders, which can sort of in really, really, really large numbers help deal with Ultralis. Siege tanks also in large numbers can help deal with Ultralis, which I think is probably his biggest benefit, as well as some of those Liberators, but this if is still gonna be If you shot in the head and put out of your misery, do you really have a headache though? <laughs> No, I do not. But I think so that's... You're, you're, you're dead before you feel that pain. Yeah. Uh, Ultra's gonna lead the charge. Some links on the north side distract some of the tank fire. Nurture actually takes a pretty bad approach to the fight and bleeds out quite a few units before anything even starts. A mistake out of him to be Ooh. certain. Drop on the north side could be a little surprising. Whoa. Nidus Worm gets picked off. Semper with some of the back attack finally getting something done, but oh my God. no drones are killed. He pulls them away. And unfortunately, a Nidus Worm and a base snipe, while not bad, also not great. I would say more so, and I agree, like, that's good, but not great. But the big thing that I think was actually great was how much time he just bought. Nurcio pulled his entire army back. Nurcio was ready to charge into that fourth expansion and kill it off, as well as charge into the third expansion and kill off a majority of Semper's army, which I don't think is fully prepared yet. But he's got himself time now. <laughs> I love this tweet from Rotterdam, by the way. Todd just promised me that if Samper beats Nurture, he'll shave his head. Well, <laughs> oh my God! Well, you know what? I'm rooting for I'm rooting for Semper so hard right now. Now, are we talking like shaving your head like a buzz cut? Or are we talking like Caldor levels of bald? You know, that's that's an important distinction. <laughs> you know what? I will take anything under half an inch of hair. Anything between right. like totally bald Close and half an inch. Got it. Uh, while this goes on, and while that bet uh, dream hack is aside, I do want to point out, Nurture just made eight Corruptors. And while we're not seeing this rush towards the Greater Spire, love Corruptor play for dealing with uh, Medivacs. They just, they're so tanky naturally. They don't need a lot of upgrades. They can soak Marine hits. They'll deal with Liberators. I mean, Corruptors are just great all-around units to have. But make no mistake, the power of this army isn't even the Ultras. It is It lies entirely in the combination of Fungal Growths and those Corrosive Biles. Hmm. 
All right, corruptors are going to be able to shut down a lot of the medevac harassment that has been harassing him and uh, giving him some headaches for a while now. But Semper, uh, does he actually have a good enough army now? He's getting close to max out, but not quite there. Banelings are being made. Ghosts are going to be coming out. These two players are getting ready for the big armies, but I think Nurture is going to be ready just about 15 to 20 seconds earlier. Oh, the, such flip hooks. I, I really like the addition of ghosts here, not because of the ultras and the snipes, but because he needs to EMP those infestors. He mm. needs to make sure those fungal growths don't go off. His army can try to take care of the rest, but not if it's stuck in place and not if the fungal growths are killing him. Oh, uh, corruptors! That. They're just getting free reign to kill off three liberators without taking a single shot. This is where you wish you just had all the money in the world to throw down missile turrets. Unfortunately, not the case here for Semper. Attack for the south side. Wraps around the Liberator, so he's almost no damage. The Ultralis are going down, but there's the Fungal Growth. Here comes some of the corrupt, uh, Corrosive Biles, and the Corruptors just kill every single Liberator. Now look at the bank, right? Oh, Semper mm. actually took a decent fight from Nurcio, except Nurcio remaxes on five Ultras, 30 Lings. He's got 2K still in the bank. Running across the map is not going to be a problem for him. Oh, boy. His ghosts are on and all at retreat right now, and that's the, awkwardly the only thing he really has right now is ghosts. It's like, okay, cool. I guess you can snipe down the army, but what do you do when you is run that, out of energy or when your opponent just cancels the cast? Is that irony? Like when the only thing alive is a ghost? <laughs> yes, that is irony. It's like rain on your wedding day. I really hope they put skins in the game where the ghosts have like bed sheets draped over them. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Called basically like the carbon animation skin for the Halloween thing. Uh, okay. You know, I, what do you think about, like, when you see this army dancing around like this, do you actually start using snipes on the Ravagers just because as you don't see the Ultralis around? Just because you have so many ghosts? I think at this point, you just do what you can. Uh, yeah. I like the attempt to snipes on the Corruptors. As you see, it doesn't quite one-shot them, so Ugh. they don't even go down fully. The surround from the Lings might be a bit too much. The snipes going on the Ultras as best they can, but there's just too much. GG. GG. Nurcio. Nurcio. Takes game number one. Very nicely done. I want to point out that, <clears throat> well, I, I don't mean this in any disrespectful way towards Semper. Nurture really had that game on lockdown from the early stages of it. When he went across the map for that Roach poke, he did so because he knew there was going to be no repercussions for it. And that was pretty much the status of the rest of the game for him. I'm sorry, I got distracted by the fact that you just said repercussions, and it just made me realize if we see a 3 axe Reaper, that'd be a really good joke. Oh no, do you not know my joke? Have you no, not heard I don't. This? I don't think I've heard your Reaper repercussions joke before. Wait, no, I don't know if you're being sarcastic or not. I, I'm gonna I tell it anyways, you can just play along, okay? Okay. Why should you never buy a couch from a Reaper? Why? Because it always comes with repercussions. Can we get like a jump snare, anyone? <laughs> That's entirely an original Rifkin joke, by the way. I'm just saying, really proud of it. Okay, moving on. King Sejong Station with the destination of this next map. All right. Now it looks like we're just going to have some issues getting Nurchu into the lobby, but once he's in, we'll be ready to go. This is, uh, we got a donation coming in, and I'm going to out this gentleman for just... You're going to out him? Wait. Yeah, Justin Weber, I'm not going to use your game name that you wrote, donate $5 to say some really rude things about Zombie Rub. Oh. Uh, so, thank you, Justin Weber. Please charge that money back, or just leave it. I don't care. Either way, you're filth, and I would love to never see you again. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Anyways, uh, as we get into this game, though, the emphasis here really goes towards, I think, Samper trying to make something happen. Talk more in a moment. You got those intros. See you yeah. soon. Okay, here we are with game number two in this best of five series from the round of 32 of DreamHack Montreal. Spawning down here in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we have the red Terran player from North America and looking to take even a game off of his opponent. Give it up for Root Gaming Semper. You make it sound like that's like his... <laughs> like, he didn't come to DreamHack Montreal to try to win the tournament. He just wanted to take one game off of his opponent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's a hard opponent to face off against it, first round. It truly is. He is one of the most terrifying foreigners you could hope to fight in a bracket. In the top left, it's going to be the blue Zerg Nurcio. Now... King Sejong does have one small thing where maybe Semper can get some shenanigans behind the rocks at the natural. 
do the siege tank, the bunker, deny some mining. But the problem with what makes Nurchio, I think, such a tough opponent to fight is Nurchio doesn't get in your face with early pool lings. He doesn't hit you with all-ins with roaches and ravagers. He just has this impenetrable defense. Like, playing against him has to be something equivalent to the way I think Zerg players fought, felt playing against turtle mech players. Like, you just cannot deal damage to him. And it's not because Ravagers and Roaches are so good. No, we've seen them lose before plenty of times. It's the fact that Nurture knows how to be in position for drops, knows how to predict and read his opponents like a book. It's really easy for him to get map control. Mm -hmm. And all of these things combined is why, like he could play Protoss or Terran. I think it'd be the same situation. You just wouldn't be able to break him. You know, the thing I, I do totally agree, but the thing I will say about Semper and the way he played that last game is that he did the drop harassment, and even if he didn't get tons of damage done, and I totally agree, Nurture did a great job of the defense, he didn't really lose a lot. And I think that's one of those things. You still want Semper to go through the motions of it because it forces Nurchio to make sure he's not cutting the corners there. Just because Nurchio is capable of defending against the drops doesn't mean you should have let him get away without making sure he has the defenses in place for them. So I like the fact that Semper did all that harassment. I want to see him continue to do that harassment with the emphasis on what you were saying before of making sure it's free damage. Do not lose the Marines. Do not lose the medevac in exchange for it. But I think in terms of like being able to actually put the pressure on and like end the game, I think that he has to hit that timing that we talked about earlier a little bit sooner. His plus two weapons, just a little bit too, uh, there's a little bit too much time. I think there's like a 15, 25 second window where Engineering Bay finished off plus one weapons, plus one plus one was done, didn't start up plus two weapons. It's a small thing, but that plus the delayed move out, I really do think he could have done a lot just pushing out with 2-2. Two -two. Hmm. Well, we'll see if this game looks any better for him. I just, I would love to see, there was um, a series, I, I think it was, yeah, you throw him over to Stefano. Mm -hmm. And like part way through the series, he just said, no, this isn't working, this is stupid. I'll try playing mech. And like, weirdly enough, his half-assed, unpracticed mech build is going to work for him. Uh, I do want to point out that Semper is doing something interesting with the fusion core. Now, 99% oh. of the time, this is for Liberator range. Semper actually, for a small period of time in the beta, was actually getting a fast battle cruiser out and doing some stupid stuff with it. I don't think that's the direction we're going, <laughs> yeah. but it is worth noting because he has done it in the past. But frankly, I actually don't know how good Liberator range will be. It'll be great at trying to deny some money at the natural. Mm -hmm. There's not really a lot of space in the main, and certainly no way to really abuse it on the third, however. So this mm. will be interesting to see him going for it this quickly, if it can actually accomplish anything. Yeah, it'll definitely be a little bit difficult to actually make a whole lot happen over here. But the natural expansion, I think it's still a pretty nice area to try and get something done. Uh, Roach Warren is finished up, and Roaches are going to be coming out. Liberator is going to be finishing up as well as the Liberator uh, Ballistics coming out. But like, it's going to be another minute I like before the idea. Finished. I like the idea behind this. I'm just, I'm really curious to see if it'll work. We've not actually seen anyone execute this, the old school, we'll call it bunny build, on this map yet. Okay, well, the nice thing right now is that these Hellions are actually keeping Nurture rather occupied with all of his Roaches and even pulling one of his Queens away. So, I'm not sure if all of the defenses are going to be there for the Liberator. Uh, even using, a, I like actually the fact that he even split up two of these Hellions on the left-hand side. Just getting a scout around, got some pot shots off on some of these Zerglings, and is going to be able to catch them before they make it through that gap over at the Natural Expansion. Well, Liberator comes around. It looks like it's not going to the natural expansion. It's going all the way to the main base. Unfortunate thing is, Nurchio immediately scouts it out. So Semper's really not going to be able to make a whole lot happen over here. Or shouldn't be able to, at least. Well, well, at least he reacts. You see the spore crawlers down. This is what I was talking about. There's not a lot of wiggle room. There's only yeah. one angle of attack. The reason this works really well in other maps, like Dust Towers and stuff in the past, was there's a couple of different ways and angles to abuse it. I, it might just be too limited on this map. Behind this, we do have an interestingly high number of Hellions still alive running around the middle of the map. Oh, that's a dead queen. That is a dead queen. Uh, and if the Spore Crawler moves, I think it'll be in position. Yeah. Moves up. That's a nice positioning, though. That's a really nice uh, positioning. These Hellions. I'm really curious about these Hellions. That Liberator's going to get like three or four drone kills on the main, sure. A couple on the natural base even set up. But the Hellions on the north side, they're intercepted by the Lings. Nurture paying attention despite all these distractions at two other bases. He's paying attention to what's going on. Oh, uh, but Semper busy migrating his Hellions might lose his Liberator. Barely keeps it alive. Nicely done. 
And uh, I will note behind this, there's a Nidus Worm coming out right now for Nurcio. Whereas Semper is getting up his third, he's getting up his double engineering base, but they are slightly later double engineering base. So, uh, not going to be falling behind in upgrades, but not as early as the last game. Alright, Liberator able to find a spot in the third, but is going to have to back off since the queens are there. Gonna be this is where I really mm. wish we had our graphs mod on. Because I'm yeah. curious to see just how much this has messed with the economy. Numbers-wise, I want to point out, stamper has been consistently floating about 1,500 to 1,700 minerals per minute, whereas Nurture has been stuck closer to 1,000, despite having three bases. Part of this is the benefit of mules, and part of it is the disadvantage of constantly having to pull drones away from mining. I don't know if this was enough to really screw him over, but it is certainly interesting to note that Nurture did lose money through these attacks, beyond what is just shown on the resources lost. Mm-hmm. Interesting, there's like a stray tech lab sitting over here in Semper's base. <laughs> Just like the abandoned probably. tech lab. Oh no. Okay, well, we do have a bit of a move out over here from Nurcio, interestingly enough. I guess looking to try and delay a third expansion from landing, but he realizes that there's too big of a bio force over here. He knows that Semper's not just getting aggressive with medevac drops, which, speaking of which, the first two medevacs are about to pop out, so. He can uh, put on a little bit more pressure with that. And look at this. Main base for Nurcio still not got any mining going on. I Nurcio just forgot to resaturate it. Yes. Or he transferred over to the fourth, which appears to be what actually happened. Hmm. Okay. Well, he's he's he was really <laughs> oversaturated as natural expansion, though. Well, that's the thing, because he's waiting for the fourth to finish. He just yeah. finished the transfer, so. It was, it's probably the smarter way to go about it, honestly. You don't want to waste much of time, and more importantly, your actions and attention in the main. That's fair. Uh, Hellions are going to be still maneuvering around. I like the, these Hellions have just, like, done a really nice job of staying alive, which is something that a lot of they're, turn players don't do a good job of. They're an interesting threat, because if Nurture ever forgets about them, it's going to hurt them really badly. But there's also yeah. no way for them to really just brute force their way in anywhere. Ooh, Marines coming into that third expansion, able to get a little bit of damage done. Gotta be careful, that spore call, that spore call is gonna kill off the medevac! Oh no, there goes the free damage idea, but eh, he's still doing some damage. Although he is losing a few workers himself somewhere. The third. Oh, losing a lot of workers to this lane counterattack. Oh, oh, this is a huge problem. Semper moved out with his entire bio force. Everything except for the siege tanks. And with that, suddenly Semper is not nearly as up in workers as he was before. He had a solid like 10 or so worker lead, but not really going to be the case anymore. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm still just like a little bit thrown off by that main base. I understand the idea of like not really worrying about until uh, mining it out too early on, but not even mining from the gas guys is a little bit weird. I guess he doesn't need that much gas right now. He's not exactly going super gung-ho on teching up. Uh, speaking of which, he's only just now gotten that 1-1 one, one up started up pretty soon. So he's going to be sitting behind the full set of upgrades for a majority of this game. Oh, misses the fungal. Really wanted to catch those cluster of medevacs. Unfortunately, not going to be the case. Looks like those Hellings did manage to sneak in, but unfortunately did not manage to get the kills that they were hoping for. Yeah. Double medevacs loaded up, moving along the left-hand side. Unfortunately for Semper, once again, there are still all of these overlords over here. They're going to continue to scout them out every single yeah, time this, he tries to move in. <laughs> this brings me back to like the days when Polt would play with that one Viking. Yeah, th yeah there's a like, good like, reason he would get that one Viking. Yeah, that would have actually benefited uh, Semper hugely in this game, actually. Hmm. All right, well, the Hive Tech is about to come up, and the nice thing, as long as Semper doesn't lose these medevacs, it's going to be nice at least knowing the exact timing of that Hive. And uh, he will be able to at least start taking appropriate measures, whether that be getting up some way to deal with the Ultralis, or at a minimum, going for a push-out. And I feel like the push-out is going to be a really strong case in this situation, where 2-2 is pretty close to completing. He's already doing a lot of pressure on this fourth expansion, as the entire army was dealing with that medevac drop. Fourth expansion is getting focus fired down, and the drop, it, the double drop is still in the main base! There's nothing over there! Oh. Wow, if this, I don't think it'll get the, the Hive, but if it does, that's huge. I'll set Nurture back oh! a big way. Fungal Growth catch two of the tanks, two of the medevacs, but there's no Crucible Bile follow-up. Move, well, move! Oh, he's he gonna save move. himself. Oh, no. Oh, uh, he still saves the rest of it, and he's focus firing down the Hive. There is he no Ultralis Cavern thrown down just yet, and there it goes. 
Oh my god. Sever, despite taking the losses he did, can suddenly breathe for a little bit. But the problem is, even without this leading towards ultras, as we've seen, Nurchio does not need ultras. He he doesn't need them, but in this situation, I do feel like it's going to be kind of hard for him to deal with a lot of the harassment because he lost his fourth and he lost his main base. He's basically reduced down to a two-base economy. He is all in right now. He can get up his lair attack, but you can see he's not reestablishing that hatchery immediately. He's trying to get up his fourth now, but he has to do some damage with that army because that's the one thing he has. He's behind in upgrades. He's behind in workers. He's behind in bases. I, I don't know if he can do it. He if Semper sets up over here, if he finishes a planetary fortress, I actually don't think that Nurchio can break in over here. Well, Lair tech is finally finished up and he can start up Hive tech immediately. He did still manage to save that infestation pit that was sitting over the third expansion. And he is immediately going to go be going up, back up into Hive. But now we're back at that situation where Semper is already started on 3-3 and 2-2 is finally going underway. And I want to also note, Nurture did something different than he has done in not only the last game, but in a lot of his games. He went for missile attacks. He did not go for melee attacks. So those Ultralists, while they are mainly around just to be that tanking damage, they are also going to be dealing a lot less damage. So that's the thing. Ultras don't really need upgrades to deal damage. Just the thing. They just mm -hmm. live forever. So the baseline damage is more than enough. And... I would say Nurchio, more often than not, consistently focusing on ranged upgrades, knows that this benefits Queens, it benefits the Roaches, the Ravagers, oh. you name it. Oh, that's going to be nasty. Yeah. Wait, you can unload from Metavax when they're bungled? Yeah. Oh. As you can see, it's not usually too effective, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, well, there's a couple of good fungals. And the fungal gross sound, I never realized how gross it was. <laughs> Just now. Uh, more investors, of course, coming up next. We'd like to point out Nurture is still not invested in Pathogen Glands. So even though we are still going to see more and more investors coming, just deeming to save that gas for Ultralis and Kindness Plating and all that. But, oh, goes for Spire first. Hmm. So he might not actually be aiming towards Ultras the same way we normally see him do. Nurture is someone who very... Wait, another Roach Ward? He doesn't have a Roach Ward. He got sniped off. Oh, I didn't realize that you didn't rebuild it. I just assumed you'd already redone it. Okay, mm -hmm. anyways, my point, sorry, going back on this, though, is he's someone who's very comfortable playing around, like, corrosive biles, corruptors, fungal growths, and all that stuff. So I don't think he needs Ultras. But I want to point out there's another style very similar to this that Snoot's been showing off lately, where he goes straight to Broodlords instead of Ultras. So this, uh, this might be a greater spire. It might just be for the Corruptors. We'll find out. Time will tell us. We do have a small attack here on the left side. It's not going to get too much done, unfortunately. But Nurture has that a damn big amount of army walking around the middle of the map, actually. Semper doesn't see that army moving. He's got a setup over here defensively, but Nurture says, no, I'm not there, bro. I'm way the hell over this side. Oh, uh, Semper should have noticed now, at least if he was paying attention, but I don't know if he was paying attention. He is busy moving up the ramp and through the choke point, killing off roaches and ravagers over here. But at the same time, his destructible back to rocks and his natural are going to be going down. He kills off the fourth expansion, but Nurchio has been taking the map behind this. So is he okay with just sacrificing that in exchange for going after Semper's natural expansion, his main base, his production line? I mean, when it's base trade territory, unfortunately, Roaches never win that trade, but it is something mm. that has brought Semper back home, and he's not going to commit to it a, an actual attack himself. Yeah, I don't know if Semper can bring this into an actual base trade right now, because yeah, he killed off a base, but trading like one base of economy for a base and production, I don't, I don't know if that favors the Terran player, just because production is going to be so important for that Terran player. New command center being established on the bottom left-hand corner, and Semper continues to chase down some of these roaches, being effective, utilizing that APM the best of his abilities, and oh man. Nurture's Semper's got an army there. lead, but I want to point out that through his own stims and through the fungal growths, the medevacs have not been that high in numbers, so they've had to do a lot of work healing. They're yeah. all pretty much out of energy, and he can't afford to heal the stimmed units. This doesn't happen often in StarCraft II, but this is really bad. Semper is hurting himself more than Nurtio is just by posturing an engagement. Ugh, he's got to be very careful. And he is making at least one more medevac right now. He's got a lot of Liberator Siege up in his main base. And look at all the production! Look at all these Marines and this Liberators in his main base! This is where you scream at a pro player to just F2 for once in their life. Like, uh, well, you know, F2 wouldn't even save it right man. now because these Liberators will still be sieged up. Yeah, that's true, yeah. 
He's gonna be fighting with this like is bad. three he quarters is fighting of his army. With a quarter of his army supply missing. Oh, Semper, Semper, please, not like this. Don't, don't let it happen like this. In fairness, I don't know how effective the Marines would be, but it is a lot about those liberators. Mm. Like that's. If these were focused on, say, the choke oh. at the natural, I could understand leaving them there. But leaving them like this on the main it just got me going like, what? I mean, wellspring out marines. There's no ultralis coming, and there's no ultralis cavern down. In fact, the, the spire isn't re even really being utilized just yet. So I think like the marines are still going to be pretty effective, and those those oh, liberators you know at least soak up the This is going to accidentally work. <laughs> so comes oh to the top of the my ramp. god! The liberators and marines are here. Norchio's going to move up the ramp and be like, wait, how did he know? <laughs> That's oh actually going to drive him back, so kind of works out for Semper. Now, he is going to try to initiate the uh, base trade. Same problem as before, though. So many of these units are so low. If he stims, he's going to kill himself. Oh, uh, he's got to be careful. If there was an Infestor back at home or something, Semper would be in so much trouble right now. There is a, There are a lot of Roaches trying to make their way back home right now, I, even taking out one of the Liberators. I you Semper's still in trouble. Uh, I don't know. Semper's not really taking many losses back at home. Like, he... Yeah, he took some losses in the main base on the natural expansion, and the fourth oh, expansion shit. might be under he... fire. Did he snipe Nurture's 3 3 or did Nurture cancel it? He must have sniped it. Oh, yeah, Nurture's he... not even on full upgrades. Yeah, he sniped it. All right, Flat oh. Jack goes down on the other side of the map. Important because it's a mining base. Semper really only does have the bottom left side mining currently. Uh, but this isn't a game about economy anymore. It's about what you got to fight with. And frankly, I still think Nurture wins an army fight. One or two fungals, corrosive biles, takes out over half of Semper's army easily. I feel like those ghosts are going to become so important, Rifkin, as the EMPs. If yep. you can get a good set of EMPs, li even just limiting the number of fungal growths that can go down, it will make a world of difference in this engagement. Ghost is leading the charge right now. Where are the EMPs? Doesn't get any off. Uh, he there's some good EMPs. Still lands but a couple of fungal growths. They hit the ghosts. They hit oh, the tanks. But the siege the tanks. The clouds aren't good enough, though. They're doing they enough. I think it's enough. But there's no healing. These medivacs are all empty. Oh, but at the same time, Semper still has an army in the bottom right. GG gets called. He takes out he the takes base. The game. He takes the game. Oh, my God. Semper. I think you heard about that bet, Todd. Todd, I think you're in some trouble, man. You better better get your oh, hair ready for this. Slow those cool those jets. Slow the stars, man. He's not in trouble yet. It's He's not in trouble game. yet. It's one game, but it's a good game for certain. Yeah, the thing about that game that I will say... Is, it's not necessarily the fact that, like, oh, man, Semper is on the verge of winning. It's, as you were saying, it was a good game. And Semper showed that Nurture wasn't, like, making hundreds of mistakes. It wasn't like we were watching Nurture and like, who the hell is playing? That's not Nurture right now. That's that's somebody else because he's making a lot of mistakes. No, that was Nurture. He was doing a lot of the same n typical Nurture things. But realistically, Semper was actually just keeping up with it. That's what's scary about it is Semper was not being outclassed as a lot of people would have expected. Even I was expecting that. Oh, man. Well, let's review what's coming up next and still on deck for us, guys, as we do have a lot of games we're still casting today. Uh, so Nurture and Semper still plays a lot of the series out. It's only 1-1, one -one, so we're still at the start of it. After this, will be Pult versus Shadown, Laser versus XY, who is replaced by somebody. I can't remember. Uh, I think it was him who was replaced. And then Neeb versus Peely Peely at the end. <laughs> I think I asked and he replaced him, if I'm remembering correctly. I can't recall. I forget also. Um... I will say, though, like it sounds so condescending and silly. It is impressive for Samper to be up one like one with their Geo. This is no disrespect to Samper. I fully acknowledge he's a good player. I've told him this in person, yeah. right? But still, Nurture is just like such another class. So it's really cool seeing him hold up like this. Like you're not alone in this, in the sense that I am literally like the probably one of the biggest advocates for North American players. I love Semper to death, and I still thought came into the series saying like I don't know if Semper can do this, but he's making it work. We're hopping into it. Frost is gonna be the next map. We'll see you guys there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in game number three, spawning up at the top right-hand corner of the map. We got the blue Terran player from North America. Give it up for Root Gaming Semper. And in the bottom right, it's going to be the red Zerg player, Nurcio. I would love, by the way, if that was actually a situation, I'm not going to say match fixing, nothing close to it, <laughs> but it's something where Nurcio heard about the bet, and he's like, you know what? If I'm going to lose this game, it's not the end of the world, because I'll just 
Todd said some mean things about me the other day on a cast. I'm not okay with it. I don't know the case. Uh, I, I know he's not he's probably watching the stream because he's at DreamHack right now, but Dr. Sidewinder, a very regular oh. on the stream, is apparently waltzing around DreamHack wearing my stupid hoi 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 shirt. Yeah. And that makes me uncomfortable. Um, me but happy. I got a picture out of it, so <laughs> I guess that's cool. Oh boy. All right, well, Frost is definitely a bit of a different map. It's one of those maps that can lead to more macaroni games, but I will say, especially with these spawns, uh, expansion taking can get a little bit weird, I think, on this map, because I know a lot of Zerg players do like to take the forward third expansion um, if they don't see where their opponent spawned. It looks like Nurture will see it before that time, but still can lead to some sort of interesting games, especially as it gets past like the th uh, four base economies. If it goes to like five bases, players just get really, really spread out. And that can in and of itself cause a lot of problems for players. Maybe, I don't know. I, going back on that last game for just a moment though, Nurcio had lost so much income more than anything else. Mm -hmm. and I would almost hope that Semper finds some way to do that again, if not through Liberators, maybe through Widow Mines or, I don't know, Amazing Hellions, but mm -hmm. it wasn't concrete kills that got Nurcio behind that game. He wasn't losing 40 drones. It was losing 40 drones worth of mining. Yeah. So it would be really, really, really cool if Semper found a way, I don't know how, but if he found a way to do that again, because that would actually put him in a position to fight Nurcio for a third game. I totally agree. I think, again, it's that idea of like continual harassment. And if you keep the medevacs alive in the Marines, you get to continue to do more and more harassment, which forces your opponent to pull workers or move their army around and allows you to move in with your liberator. It does all that kind of stuff. It's putting pressure on your opponent. Uh, for this game, we do have, again, fast st uh, starport coming out as well as fast stim. So got the two racks opening coming out and Sanford looking to open up pretty similar to how he has in some of the previous games. So. Seems to be sticking with what's working. Uh, Nurture does decide to go for the third expansion over on the low ground. This light does not delay the expansion. Did you, you saw that, uh, the thing that was going around on, like, Twitter about how there was, like, the... I think it was, like, a critter on Dawson Station. It ended up delaying yeah. an expansion long enough for, like, a probe to come block it. The Ursadon or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah, or Ursadak. I don't know if actually name it is. I feel like it should act like, you know, in a 1v1 OBS? Do you remember 1v1 OBS? You could, like, make critters? Like, if you were nope. an observer? Okay, well, in 1v1 OBS, you could make observe, like, critters that you could just maneuver around the map. So, what would happen in there is if you tried to build something on top of them, it would kill the critter. Like, it would just kill them on the spot. I feel like something like oh. that would make sense. Interesting. I mean,. Critters are a fun aesthetic to StarCraft, but in, if we're going to be real, there's no necessity to have them at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just I think it's like an alternative solution to removing them entirely, though, because I think they had, they had that little a bit of extra flavor. Everyone remembers like the small little critters like walking around on Dawson Station, the Ursodon. It's fun. Well, Nurtu's got some pretty nice creep spread going out, and I think with the high ground vision on the map being as annoying as it is, that's more important than ever, even more so than the movement speed, just the vision it's going to provide. The Lingerin's away from the watchtower, <laughs> seeing the Marines come close. So taking care in every step this game. Uh, it is interesting, though. We got mm. Lings, we got melee weapons, we got Nurtu playing the early game without a lot of freaking queens. This is actually a very different game than we've seen so far. Yeah, and uh, this is going to be a little bit difficult Ooh. for him. Already yeah, loses those, two, those two queens. Loses. That's the difference of being able to actually focus down a medevac or not. Suddenly, Semper's got a bit of breathing room now with these drops. Yeah, he doesn't even take any hits on those medevacs at all. The queens weren't even focusing firing down the medevac. So, of course, uh, third expansion does go down behind all this for Semper. He's going to try and use the drop harassment and just the pressure at the front to secure that. But, oh, we got a Baneling Nest coming down. So, like you were saying, there's not a lot of queens, but normally... Nurture is the kind of player who will go for the melee upgrades, but still go for roaches. This game, he is completely switching it up. He is switching it up from his most well-known style. When you look at Nurture, he's like the number one person you look at and you say roaches and ravagers. He's not doing it this game. He is also going for a really far away fourth expansion. Oh, okay. If 
If Semper found out about that... I guess it's actually a fifth expansion. Uh, it's a double expand right now, coming out from Nurchio. And one of them's gonna go down, <laughs> most likely. Not well, quite yet. Drops but... being shut down, natural base also being shut down. Oh. The Liberator was a very interesting aspect to add into that, but as we see, despite the units traded out oh. and the units lost here, ooh, even the medevac went down at the very end, not quite worth it for Semper. Yeah, not really getting the same level of damage done as he did before. Uh, might be able to come back in over here with Stam. He should be able to focus fire this down. Nurcio not really responding in time. He moves his organs in a little bit too late and ends up losing that expansion. But it was a double expand. I think Nurcio was just looking to try and get up one of the two bases. Uh, of course, having the extra larva was nice, but uh, you don't really need to be up two or three. You don't need to be up three bases over your opponent. All right, looks like the drops are going to get forced back for a little bit for Semper. He should be able to go and establish that third expansion. Is he taking the forward third expansion? Hmm. Uh, I mean, this is certainly interesting. I don't know if this will be a good choice or a bad choice. Because I guess the idea is if you're providing all this pressure, ideally, Nurtio is not over here shutting down you mining. But this, yeah. is, this is not the same game as you pointed out. Like, this is going to have banelings. This has got lots and lots of lings. I'm wondering if we'll see mutalists or not. I think it was True was actually doing this style for a while where you just do just a lot of lings. Mm -hmm. Drop in the national expansion and once again sniping off those queens. So even though there are eight queens out on the map, they were not in place to deal with the medevacs and medevacs got to boost out of there. Especially the low health medevacs. Oh my god. Semper, please do not lose those medevacs with units inside of them. Please go repair them up. That's the biggest would... thing. Please go repair them up. If there was one more tumor, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? One and a half meta bags. Creep spread uh, matters. Back to the south is caught immediately. Also going to have to drop away or run away. Drop's not quite getting a lot done. And Nurtio is really on the ball with this. His tumors are great. His creep spread's okay. It could be better, obviously. But his response to all these drops, getting underneath them before they can even unload, he's been nailing it. Mm. Now Semper may just and I actually don't know about this. He's supply blocks. Oh. His plus two armor is about to finish up, so he'll have an upgrade lead. But this is just, again, like it's just legs. Oh, it's supply depot. Supply depot's down. Ah, he's going to run straight to the natural. Road. Oh, that's a mistake out of Semper. He's busy cutting the south side, so the Widow Mines will not get a chance to burrow. They go down. Natural base under attack. Bailey's hitting all the Marines. And this falls apart for Semper so quickly. Oh, 42 Semper. workers go down, less than 40 army supply, lings are rampant inside the natural base, and I think it's safe to say Nurcio just locked down game number three. I think Semper was just completely caught off guard. He only ended up seeing the banelings toward the end of all of this, and he never really, he just didn't really have the kind of reaction that he needed to. He didn't really know exactly the composition he was going to be up against, and he just got <laughs> kind of slaughtered over there. I mean, who expected it? Who expected Nurcio to go for the style? Again, like, he is known as probably, like, the, the go-to person when you think of Roach Ravager. And this is not at all Roach Ravager. This is the Korean style. This is the Ling Bling Muta style. There is a problem with this, though, where, okay, GG goes to Nurcio. Let's just say, like, normally you would want to do what? Do more Widow Mines? Well, even if you get more Widow Mines, it's still, like, a chance that they work. Not even a guarantee. Yeah. But, I guess, uh, do we want to throw up a break real quick and we'll get into the next game? Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys in just a little bit with game number four. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are hopping into it as we get ready to go into game number four and start down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the map. The red Zerg player. Give it up for Nurcio. Now sponsored by Red Bull. Yeah. Uh, and of course, on his last life, maybe that's the motivation he needs. In the top right, it's going to be the blue Terran player, Root Gaming's Semper. I think, is there just on Euronics? I know some people left. I actually don't know. Um, let Time me to go to Google because I'm the co caster. <laughs> yeah, right? As I pull up my stuff. Yeah, yeah he's still he on Euronics. He's currently still playing for Euronics. Okay. Yeah. Has also he's won $205,000 in prize money. Okay, aren't you just cool? What a show off. Has a 71.43% win rate in ZVT lately. 
A uh, quick reminder too, like we, we've talked a lot about Nurcio's skill, and I guess it's just like on what we know of him, what we've seen. Mm -hmm. But I guess as, uh, as I look at the Wikipedia page, I'm quickly reminded that yeah, he did win a DreamHack already this year, uh, mm -hmm. Valencia even. So yeah, with the roster being what it was there, I think somewhat similar to even the higher stake players that we see here, it's totally viable that Nurcio actually goes all the way to the finals. Yeah, we'll see how good his early game defense is. There is a two racks opening over here from Semper right now. Where is the... Is there going to be a third racks? There it is. Uh, Three racks Reaper on this map. How do you feel about it? I think that this is a great map for Reapers. I think this is a great map for Blink. And I think it's a great map for anyone who wants to abuse the terrain on it. But I don't know if that's going to be enough to stop Nurcio. If Nurcio is going for Lings instead of Roaches, it might be a tougher battle for him. But it's weird because we see a lot of players unable to stop Reapers with Lings. Then you get this odd person like TLO who's got no problem using Lings to stop mm -hmm. Reapers. So I don't know where Nurcio's specialty lies in this, but uh, mm -hmm. we all know that Roaches seem to be the best without doubt. You know, one thing I will say, and I, I'm a little bit hazy on the exact details of this, so I may be wrong on this, but I do believe U Thermal in his last run at the previous tournament ended up facing off versus Nurcio, and I'm pretty sure... He three racks reapered him multiple times, was really able to do quite a bit. Now, granted, Euthermal is a god at three racks reaper, but it does give hope for Semper oh, to actually make this work. This starts out badly for Nurture. He's going to lose like two lings if Semper focus Ooh. fires. There we go. Yeah. And uh, even going to be able to take a little bit or get a little bit of damage done on some of those drones, soften up some more of the Zerglings. Third Zergling dying already. And that's before the second reaper gets here. Uh, Cuddlebear in chat asking what's map number five. I don't know. We don't actually have any information. There's no channel. We don't get to see the vetoes. It's just yeah. all admin stuff. <laughs> and then someone says there will be no map five. Maybe. Yeah, Nurgio could end the series right here just by defending the three Rex Reaper. Uh, the Roach Warren got slapped down. Mm. Well, we're going to have Lings dancing to buy some time. It will be Roaches and ideally at least one Ravager that just absolutely shuts this down. Yeah, although it is still a bit of a debate on... How, how much damage are you allowed to take to defend a three racks reaper and still be okay? Because the thing is, you do get a command center behind it. And actually, speak of the devil, third command center going down right now. I also like how Semper, it's, I think he saw when the creep tumor went it, down, so he like threw grenades on it to try and kill it off. Yeah, that's what a lot of people do. I was going to say, though, the amount of damage you're allowed to take really varies on player to player, because there are some pros that we know that say, nope, you just lost. <laughs> There's some that will say, yeah, you just have to take a little bit and respond this way. Bless you. Yeah. Kazoon oh. date, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Stream couldn't hear me. The are doing a great job of distracting Simper back towards his side of the field. I mean, consider Nurcio just droned behind us. He just droned through 3 Axe Reaper. And a lot of us think Simper is busy chasing around the middle of the map. That is a really oh, that is a really weird thought. And it's a reason why I think I see a lot more players that when they go for the 3X Reaper, they actually go for the wall in over at that ramp by the natural expansion because it prevents the Zerglings from doing what they basically just did, which is, oh god, the Reapers, the Reapers! I was going to say that prevents the Zerglings from doing these counterattacks, but oh no, Semper, or losing a few of these Reapers is actually a pretty big deal. Like, even if the push is done, the difference in power for four Reapers versus six is pretty significant. Six Reapers can actually move in and around. They can snipe off drones. They can still put on a lot of pressure. They can even potentially put on some pressure on Roaches. Uh, I guess he does join back in with some more of these other Reapers uh, as he finally I mean, did start, stop Reaper protection. Yeah, like he transitioned out. You got Stim plus one, all the magical necessities that are tearing here. Oh, he doesn't know where the Creep Tumor is. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> he see that one. Badly. Oh, that's embarrassing. But anyways, my point of this was he did cut out the Reapers early enough that dedicating gas wasn't going to be the issue. Every play every player who plays Terra knows how hard it is to manage your gas early on. Later on, you got more gas than you could ask for. But early game, it's very, very precise. Mm -hmm. So I like they didn't waste too much on it. Problem is, though, Nurcio is up quite a few drones. He's up a third base. He's moving towards layer tech. And Samper doesn't really have anything to show for this yet. As stated, he's transitioning. He's not there yet. Yeah. I will say the two things that Semper does still have going for him is one, these Reapers, I say, as I completely jinx him and he loses a couple more Reapers. Uh, but two is the fact that I know, like, just based on those previous games, he is the kind of player who can get damage done against Nurcio with those drops. He has been able to do so in these previous uh, games. 
And if he can manage to make it happen again, he can still kind of equalize. He can still bring this back. Uh, Starport is coming out, and the Metavax will be out fairly shortly. He's also getting a tech lab on that factory to just start getting up some of those siege tanks. So he should be okay on the defense once he starts getting some of those out. Hmm. What is Nurcho's game plan? He's going straight up to the infestation pit, so here we go. This is the quick tech up to Ultralis, most likely. And he's even getting up those melee upgrades once again, but sticking around on roaches. This is traditional Nurcio style, and if Semper doesn't identify this and find an opportunity to push in and punish it, he could be in a lot of trouble. I almost wonder, like, do you think it would be better? If, if you realize your opponent was going for this fast of Ultralist tech, would you just stay on two bases and go for the two base all in? Semper pushes on in and is going to try and get some damage done over here. Zerglings and Roaches all trying to get a big surround on this army. And it looks like Semper's going to lose a majority, but does save two medevacs worth of units, including quite a few Reapers, I think. Not often you see this many Reapers loaded up in medevacs. No. <laughs> it's it's like a landed Viking going up there. You're kind of like, oh, okay, well, I guess now what? <laughs> Yeah. But as the medevacs decide to scurry around the outskirts of the map, looks like they will head towards the main, and they're looking to keep Nurchu at home. I don't know about the doing damage, but the same tactics that Nurchu kind of played with the Lings earlier, these medevacs are now playing on the side of the map. The roaches sit in the main, look idle and AFK, but they keep the drops from dropping, and it also keeps Nurchu at home, so no counterattacks currently going on. But this is where we go back to Nurchu and saying he's a player who's really good at controlling multiple groups of units. He doesn't take damage lightly or easily. And frankly, Semper is not going to catch him off guard, especially with these other two drops coming. The Overlord see those right away. Mm, but he's not really in position to deal with it right now. He's he is, uh, finally that's, got some That's Nurchu for you. There you go. Yeah. See? All right. Well, opportunity opened up in the main base at least. So he's going to be able to move in over there, kill off a couple of drones, maybe be able to get a queen. It's not going to be about devastating damage. It's about the free damage and also just keeping Nurchu at home. Although, uh, killing off six workers isn't too bad. No, but it's not, it's still not getting him ahead, which is the problem. And Samper's giving away a lot of units to do this, whether it's directly mm. through deaths or them being stalled out AFK at the bottom of the map in a medevac. This is where Nurchio has no problem getting towards that Ultralist Cavern. He's got no problem with these upgrades. And Samper's only just slapping down his third while Nurchio takes a fourth. So just in every way possible. It's like um, Jesse from Breaking Bad. Ooh. Like, he can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> Uh, the, the Ultra Scavern was actually shut down there temporarily, yeah. so that's actually pretty nice. But still, it's only like a moment of time he's bought himself. Yeah, only actually delays it by like 15, 10, 15 seconds. But, well, at least he's aware that it's going down and he's going to know about it. Infestor is around, but doesn't have enough energy for fungal growth, so not going to be able to lock down those units from the medevac. Uh, still trying to make some of those drops happen on the bottom right-hand side, but looks like that's going to mostly get cleaned up as well. Semper's time for drops, it seems like it's finally come to an end. Oh, loses every single unit, too, almost. Only two Marines survive. All right, what does Semper have to show for all of this behind it, though? He doesn't really have that large of a siege tank count. He doesn't really have that big of a bio force. Uh, losing those units was probably the biggest deal. Not being able to do a ton of damage, being able to do, like, okay amounts of moderate amounts of damage is fine, but you need to keep the units alive, and that's the big thing that I don't really think Semper did. Well, Nurchio is going to be now gearing up for the big attack. Already throwing down some Fungal Gross, locking down a lot of these units. And with his upgrades finishing up as well as, did he just finish up Adrenal Glands? Yeah, that's a, might be a little bit of a problem. 2-2, two, two, Adrenal Glands, Zorglings versus the 1-1 one, one Bioforce. Semper is looking like he may very well be at the end of his ropes here. Todd's hair might be safe. Yeah, at this rate, at least. <laughs> I would imagine Semper's isn't though. I'd be tearing mine out right now out of frustration. Like, how do I, how do I, I don't even understand what's going on. He's got double medevacs in the bottom left. There are a few Zerglings over here, but I don't know if the Zerglings alone are going to be enough. Uh, now moving no, in I'm with the remainder. The ultra. Yeah, the Ultra is going to also be able to clean that up. Uh, middle of the map, small attack going on, but it's not really accomplishing too much. No yeah. Mega Fungals just yet. Got to keep an eye on that though, because if those Fungals land, Semper could suddenly drop 20 army supply. <laughs> 
Yeah, and unfortunately for Semper, there's not really the same sort of equalizing amount of damage you can get with, you know, get a little bit lucky with one or two things, and suddenly you just take out a ton of your opponent's army supply. You've got to work for it. All right, well, Nurcio is maxed out. He's got a bank. I don't think there's anything holding him back anymore. Even the drop is not necessarily even close to his bases, so if there's going to be a time for Nurcio to move in, it's probably now before Semper also finishes up his own 2-2 upgrades. Semper's knocking down his rocks, looking for an opportunity to do something. Nurcio might even just move up both of the ramps at the same time, try and get a full surround over here. And there it is, yeah. Moving on to the natural expansion. Doesn't even know, need to go first round. Can just go for that natural. Well, that's a lot of aggressive good. biles that are not going to hit much. The fungal growth was nice, but there's no medevac healing it. And Nurcio pounced on that, he would have destroyed the army. Yeah, I was sort of surprised he uses the corrosive biles to take out, try and take out SCVs rather than just zone out the army. But either way, still gets away scot free, killing off 14 workers and denying mining from that natural for a little bit for Semper. So this goes on, I know StarCraft's been tweeting and a couple other people have been talking about like how it's Blank's only chance to qualify for BlizzCon is to win DreamHack Summer. And it's just funny to me because I feel like that's literally the case for everybody except for like three people here, right? Like Nurture and a couple others who have already locked in their top eight spot. <laughs> like people make a big deal about Masa losing because he was so close to actually having qualified through and blah, blah, blah. But like, it's tough. It's yeah. really tough. That's the point of these tournaments. It's supposed to be a lot of emphasis on it. Uh, Chris and Bile is gonna land on top of everything. Oh the God! Furthermore, more Ravagers from the backside and Semper. This guy's got a couple Liberators up, but is that enough to really stop Nurcio? He might trade out decently here, but Nurcio's got five more Ultras. Excuse me, Spire, <laughs> Lings, you name it. He's got a bank to build it. Uh, the sort of impressive thing over there for me is that the fact that Semper keeps a, a surprising number of his Liberators alive, considering that engagement and. Those liberators are going to be very important for the upcoming engagement, especially with eight of these ultralists now going to be coming out on top of, I think, the two that are still survive from that last one. But, well, is it really going to be enough? That, that's the big question. It seems unlikely, but Semper's going to hold on. He's going to give it his best shot. And while it may seem to most people like that best shot is not going to be enough, well, he's down to his last rope. He has to. He's got no it's other choice. It's on the line. Uh... Losing a lot of those Liberators, losing more of those SCVs. He's trying to do some Dramedivac harassment on the bottom left, and this is, in a way, kind of nice, because these could pull back five Ultralists with just two Medivacs worth of units. I mean, you only but... need one Ultra, though. So he's just left multiple there. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think they were rallied out at the time. <laughs> you literally just need one Ultra to deal with, like, one or two drops. It's not a problem. Either so way, Lynx as long as it pulls back. across the map. Ravager's still going strong. No Liberators, because Corrosive Biles have been picking them off one or two at a time. So. What few liberators there are can't get close enough to save that planetary. It goes down. GG gets called. Ladies and gentlemen, Nurcio will advance. Oh my god, Fear Dragon. Holy shit. What? Nobody's disconnected. <laughs> Wait, is that the first series where nobody's disconnected? I don't know what it feels like yet. <laughs> All right, well. Congratulations, DreamHack! You solidified your internet for at least a decent amount of time. Because that wasn't a short series either. That was a pretty decent series. Like, it was not a lot of short games. Yeah. Right. Well, well, guys, uh, <laughs> we don't know the next one, uh, how fast it'll be till it starts, but it will be Pult versus Shutdown. That's going to be a uh, TVP, Shutdown's part of us. So do stick around. We're going to play some breaks. We'll come back and talk maybe a little bit. We might just go to extended break screen, depending on how long it'll be. But we will be back as soon as it's able to go. And if you guys aren't going to hang out on stream and you're going to watch the main stream, Twitter open on the second monitor. I'll tweet about when we're ready to go.